Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe. So today we have some fun new products. We have some products in from Melody Susie, as you guys can see. They have some new gel polish. Now these are 15 ml bottles. And may I have a moment, look at the design. Like OMG. Cut like this, I can't wait to dig into them. And even see the formula, is it the same formula? Is it new formula? Ooh, okay so they have all the directions and ingredients right here on the side perfect i love that they have that and then so they sent me us three colors so we will definitely swatch them and just see the consistency of them as well as they set um sent sorry two boxes of their sets of brushes so we have the liners and then we just have a full set um i'm loving this this looks like it's an individual brush um to be honest i'm not gonna lie i think i prefer individual brushes let me know in the comments below what is your preference do you rather a double-ended brush or just like a single like a one brush i think i kind of like a one brush right i don't know let's see what they have though obviously i don't know if these are all double-ended or just regular that looks regular to me though so that's exciting but we'll <laughs> jump into that after the swatch so just gonna take these out for us Ooh. And they're silver. Oh, I love that they did silver. Okay, and swatched. Um, how do you call that? Wand, I guess, like the polish handle. So here are the three polishes that we have. We have Lush Moss. I love that they put the name on the side. Like, actually, so it's named. No, it's not swatch tabbed on it. But this is the color of it. As we see, we have orange here, the black. Now this is like, it, it's gonna be hard to tell. It's a green though, I'll show you. It does look a smidge lighter in the bottle, like a smidge, but again, right, that's gonna be a little hard, I feel, to color match that. Gorgeous, gorgeous, so we'll definitely swatch that. We have an orange here. Again, these are 15 mils. Ooh, that's like a nice, it's almost like a little bit of a darker orange, like you know, like a, like a, a, a smidge burnt maybe? I like that. I hope that's not sheer. Oh, I thought, we'll see. I guess you can always build it up, right? But let's see how they work. I don't know their consistency. Oof, and just a good old black. Blacks are hard ones, so I'm not going to lie. I'm glad that we can test out a black and see, you know, it's, it's hard to find a good black. But let's check it out. Let's check it out. I have some swatches here. I already went ahead and buffed them. That's why they look like this. And all that is, is just, I actually put primer on my swatches. Okay, so we have the black here. this like perfect coverage but I want to let it dry so let's put her in the lamp one coat one coat with that black okay I want to see when it's dry but that was one coat it's really making me feel it's one coat okay so let's try the orange oranges are hard I'm stop me in my tracks oh no shadowing at all Wow. Look at that. There is no shadowing in that at all. Besides the fuzzy that's right there. You see that fuzz? OMG, look at that. Mm, let's get her dry. Guys, that coverage is like 
remarkable 15 mils okay oh, we have a green one now all right now that we've swatched two i've got the feel of the polish we're gonna go this um uh, moss what was it called Me and fuzzies. Okay. Look at that. Again, there's no shadowing. Okay, so my opinion so far, just on swatching these three, I like to try to feel it out a little bit, right, before I just jump in and say, oh, it's this, this, because you just don't know. But these are all hard colors. Black is a very hard color to work with. Orange is a very hard color as well. Most times with orange, you need at least two to three coats just so you don't get the shadowing effect of orange. And this is a dark color as well, so this is going to be a harder color too. But guys, and honestly, slightly to no smell. Slightly to no smell. Orange. Let me pull one out here. Let me get that orange one. It should be done now. Let's top coat it. Okay. Quickly, I'm going to go in and top coat these. I'm going to show you guys that. Okay, guys, here we are. One coat. That is remarkable. I am a totally in love with that coverage. Like I said, no shadowing. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I really stick it up in a certain light, I think the orange we would need. We would want one more coat, but you could, it could definitely pass that black. There is no shadowing in either one of these. No wrinkling at all. So it was a perfect cure, meaning that we didn't go too thick with our product or nothing like that. OMG. That formula is remarkable. Oh my goodness. You did it again, Melody Susie. You did it again. Oh, those colors are so pretty too. So we can create some nail art tonight. Today using them colors. Hopefully. Try to create a gonk. Not that good at them, but we're going to try. And we're going to do that using their brushes. So let's get into these ones first. Oh my. Let's take both of them out, I guess. So that's what you would get in that box, the liners. And then this is the brush kit set. Oh. Oh my god, you even get a little palette. And that's what you would get in the set. So the set you would get here, super cute. Let's open up these. Okay. Oh, so I don't mind a double ended with a dotting tool on it. That to me is perfectly fine. It's the brush on the other end. Sometimes the lids get loose, right? But a dotting tool, you don't really need a lid back there. Okay. Oh, that's nice. It's so pretty. All right, guys. So let's go through them all so you can quickly take a look at what comes in this set. This here is their 06 liner. Super pretty. Pretty small head. But that is definitely a gorgeous brush. Oh my, so pretty. So here we have their, oh, that's just their four. Look, a little petal brush. I love the ombre like oh my god and it's nicely sealed I like that okay we have like a baby little fan so cute and then we have a nice ooh it's a very small like little dotting tool like like the like the smallest little guys I like that end though like that's a unique end I feel like that would be really good for like just little detail stuff right oh that's gorgeous Ooh, we have a very very small baby one this is just the fifth one number five again look at that ombre-ish like it goes a little lighter down there I don't really tell oh, maybe not maybe it's just my eyes the way it looks it's so pretty it's hypnotizing almost 
So here is like the smallest little liner. So cool. Okay, I have an angled brush with a larger dotting tool. So that would be good for more of your circles and stuff when you want to do like eyes or just anything like your actual dots and then you can make them bigger. It's a little bit rounder and then you have like the edged brush there. And then this looks like a gel application brush, just the squared one or straight. Um, this is number one, again with a very baby dotting tool on the end, very small circle. And then this is, would be your squared one. Right. Now here, and it's even in blue, is your gel brush. That is so pretty. Now, you, oops, sorry. You could build with this. That was nice. I would say that's giving me like a six vibe size wise. Where you want to go by size, six to eight. No, oh, it's around a six, I would assume. It's a great size, honestly, for gel. You don't need big brushes for gel, you don't need a lot of it, it'll move too much. I just love that. That is going like right here. Sorry, that's going right there. <laughs> it's going in my cup with all my things. These are gorgeous. So we're going to be using some of these today. So let's go in and look at, oh, let's look at this little palette. So cute. A little square palette. Isn't that just the prettiest thing? I don't think I have any like square ones. Like they're like, was it rectangles? Sorry. Like that. That's cool. And then here we have the liners. Oh, we go to a 20 mm. Okay, so all the tops are little hold out. Ooh, okay, so this one is five. I like how the lids have their color to them, so every brush is different. I like that, so I'm not gonna get them confused. And I like how they're wider at the end. I feel some brushes get very tiny, and it almost, I feel like you br like bend your brush when it goes in. So I like that it's a wide lid. Makes it so it's not gonna touch. Oof, that's a beautiful, beautiful brush. Metal. Again, oh, this one's your 20. Grab the big one. Ooh. So pretty. Oh, 9 mm. It's a good size. So, this is like almost your average size that I feel your standard size. Depends on how you get comfortable, though. Some people are comfortable using a lot longer brushes for even shorter detail. Here's an 11, or vice versa, using long brushes. For small or short for long. Actually, that's a pretty good size. Maybe that's more standard than 11. I like that. I love them though. And here we have the seven. There's a baby one. So cute. Love that. Those are some nice, nice brushes. OMG. Like they're so pretty. I love them. Thank you so much, Melody Susie. Truly, truly appreciate you guys. Now, let's see if we can draw something with these brushes. So I want to try to draw like a little gonk guy, I'm gonna call him. <laughs> and Hopefully he comes out cute and then we can have a little bit of inspiration for the upcoming seasons. He's more like, I guess you can use him more for Christmas and fall vibes. So I feel like we're going to get a lot of use out of a little character like this. So let's try to draw one, shall we? Okay guys, so we're going to go ahead and grab a little bit of base coat. I'm going to put a little bit on your palette over here. So we're just going to go like this much for now. And you're going to want to prep your brushes. So 
know for sure I'm going to want to be using probably the 11 for now. So how I like to prep my brush, you just kind of break it apart very, very gently. You see the little white things that kind of almost come out? It's just like, almost, it's glue I believe, right? So we want to kind of get those out of there. Remember, be very gentle. You're not pulling. You're almost just like, you know, breaking them apart. So once it's broken apart, now we can go into a little bit of base coat. And you just want to get her worked in. Now take her off to the side and just roll your brush. That's all I do. Just roll it into it and then it just will end up. And then you can pull. And then you should be good to go. Perfect prep every time. Base coat is your best friend for that. If you don't want top coat, base coat would work the best, right? To mix into your formulas. So a little bit of base. Any of your brushes, you're gonna want that. For sure we're gonna use that brush, but I have it on the side for when I'm ready. Um, like I said, I'm gonna to try to talk you guys through this. I just have a little prepped nail here, just as a little base, and we're gonna to try to draw a gonk guy. So I think I wanna start with his body. Let's do orange for the body. I'm gonna start by making almost as rounded out a square. <laughs> I know it kind of sounds a little crazy, but that's kind of what I'm doing for the body. Um, you just kind of want to make it rounded out on the edges, and then we'll put our little feet and hands in it. I know it looks a little bit weird, but to be honest, this is the easiest way I found of drawing these guys. So I just kind of draw the body, like I said, like a rounded out square kind of thing. Um, use your own discretion to kind of make it how you feel. And go up and around and clean it. And then I'm going to go in here and make little feet. So I find it's easiest to kind of make them almost like a little kidney bean-ish shape um, on each side and then kind of bring them into touch. Now I just use kind of like my rounded out body shape. I kind of go over that and then just come in with the feet if that makes sense what I'm trying to do. It's almost like a kidney bean kind of. Um, that's what I'm going to do for the little feet. So I want to put the little feet here, attach them there, and then I'm going to go in and put the little hands. Now I do recommend, I went too small personally for my hands here guys. You could have went a little bit bigger. I think they get lost unfortunately. But over time and practice, you'll know how to gauge them. I'm still learning my own self so I hope you guys can learn from this a little as well. So I'm going to put little arms. I kind of put them in teardrop shapes um, coming down and that's kind of how my arm vibe will go for these little guys. After I've gone ahead and cured that, I do cure after the feet and the arms, I'm going to go ahead and draw the beard. So I'm going to kind of round it out at the top a little bit here and kind of get the beard shape, I guess you would want to. And then I'm going to come in and do lines for the beard as you would the little hairs. Now these liner brushes are working absolutely amazing. I'm loving them. They're so easy to work with. And I love that they're just one-ended. I know I'm weird like that, but I just, I don't know. I'm just not a huge, the biggest fan of the double-ended brushes. I don't know why I just haven't had the best of luck with most of them. There is a few brands that I do enjoy, but usually I'm, I'm, I'm a one brush person. <laughs> so I love that this, with these little brushes, they do have the multiple sizes. So it's easy for me to get in there. And I just want to kind of, like I said, draw up. This is going to be the beard. Now remember with gonks, you don't see their faces. You only see the nose. So we're going to draw the beard here. And then we're going to go down and do just the scriggly little lines as like the beard hairs. Now with that, I would say using a paint actually works pretty cool because it gives it a, di a different texture when drawing i do find um it works a little bit better to see the different texture than a gel polish would in this um, instance so if you have a gel paint try to try to try out your gel paint for that uh, but if not your gel polish will work just as good i tr i just recommend actually to get the texture do it in separate cures. So do your first one with your first lines, cure that, then go in again with a little bit lighter of a hand and give it some squirrels or whatever you want to call those little frays and then cure that. And then you'll almost get it like the multiple layers and you'll kind of see the different strokes. So it gives it a little bit of detail for the, the little beard guy. And now we're going to go in and do the nose. Um, and that's all you really need is just a nose for the gonk. And then we're going to do the hat. So with the nose, I'm just going to take oh, like a little fleshy pink tone for a nose cure that in there and then I'm going to go in with the hat. Now 
I'm not the best at drawing the hats. Uh, you just kind of curve it, I guess. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not the best at explaining that. But try to curve out or curve over first. Whatever you feel is the easiest. Um, I usually try to curve out and then go up over the top. So what I want to do, I actually want to sugar this um, a little hat. But what I'm going to do is I want to color it in with the color of the polish first. Uh, a lot of people would sugar it right now, actually, after I color it in, before you cure it. I'm going to cure the color on first, and then I'm with the second coat of the color I'm gonna sugar that one I find that way if your sugar does come off a little bit over time you still get the color that's underneath so you don't see the patchiness as much so I I'm a two coater when I sugar I know a lot of people just do just do the one coat I prefer two. Um, so I will do that with my little hat now I'm not gonna lie guys I actually forgot to top coat the whole thing first and then go in with the hat to sugar it. I would recommend that would probably be the easiest way. But if you do forget to do it that way, I'm going to show you how you can still top coat it after you've sugared and not and not top coat the sugar part, right? It happens. Sometimes we just forget steps. So what I'm going to go do in quickly is just, I did cure the green part of the hat. So I'm going to go back in over it with our second coat before I cure it. Now we do not want to cure this yet. We will sprinkle it with glitter and then we'll cure it and then we'll come back out. All right, you guys will see. I'll show you in a second. So I'm just going to use a dark colored glitter, um, the closest color I got to the polish that I have. And that way you'll actually, it'll just, it'll just look the best to be honest. If you can get the, the most, the most matched out color will, will look the best for your, your background if you can. So with that, now after it's cured, you just dust it off. And again, I forgot to top coat it. I recommend doing that first. But if you do forget, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Just be careful. Go in and top coat around your sugar glitter. And that way you'll still keep your sugar and you can just protect the rest of the nail. But it is a little bit easier to kind of do that first. I'm not going to lie to you. But we all forget stuff sometimes. Be sure to put your nail upside down. This way the top coat will go over all your polish and you have a smooth surface. I decided to put one little crystal because I thought it would just be so cute and it kind of matched the orange. <laughs> just as like a little ball. I don't know. What do you guys think of the little gonk? I really would love to see you guys try it if you've ever tried one. I know my arms could have been bigger, that's for sure. But I think it turned out so cute. Thank you guys so much for watching and a huge thank you to Melody Susie. I'm loving the brushes and the polishes are gorgeous. Thank you so much. Enjoy guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!